What's up guys, it's Awesome Joe, back with another how to build a 3D printed Ghostbusters Proton Pack tutorial. This time, we're gonna be going over the materials that you need to get started finishing your Proton Pack. So let's jump right into it. But before we get started, do me a favor and go ahead and hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, so that you can get notified for all my future videos, all my future tutorials. So the first thing you're gonna need is some sandpaper. Now you can get sandpaper at any hardware store, any big box store like Walmart. You can also get this stuff at Dollar Tree. That's where I got this stuff from. It comes in a, like a variety pack and you get a bunch of different grits. This one has 80 grit, 100 grit, all the way up to 200 grit. It's very cheap, low quality sandpaper, so it's going to not last very long. So keep that in mind if you buy the cheap dollar store stuff. But for the purposes of a proton pack, we don't have to get it super smooth, so I don't need high-end sandpaper. However, if you want to make the job a little bit easier, I would recommend buying some higher-end stuff from Walmart or a auto parts store where you will find more expensive but also higher quality sandpaper. I also recommend using these things, these little rectangular sanding sponges. You can also get these from the dollar store. This is a medium grit one, and I use these a lot. I like to use these to sand down big areas where I can just kind of go to town uh, really quickly and knock down those layer lines. And if you were wondering what you needed the sandpaper for, it is to sand down those layer lines because we don't want our proton pack to look like it is 3D printed at the end. So we're going to use our sandpaper and our various materials to do a finishing process to make sure that our proton pack is nice and smooth once we get our paint and our texture added. So, with that being said, the next thing that you're going to need, a can of this stuff, filler primer. Now, this is the cheap Harbor Freight brand. It is about $5 a can. Um, typically, I would use the Rust-Oleum brand, but it's a little bit more expensive, and I kind of discovered this not that long ago, and it works pretty well. If you're on a budget, I highly recommend using this filler primer. If you're not as much on a budget and you want to stick with uh, tried and tested products, I would definitely go with the Rust-Oleum. I've never had the Rust-Oleum stuff uh, do me wrong. Um, this stuff is working pretty well right now, but if you would just want to have that extra layer of protection, um, I would definitely go with the Rust-Oleum. I may do a review about this filler primer as well. Um, they are a little bit different, but they mostly do the same thing. You're gonna be using this to smooth out the layer lines on your Proton Pack once you have them sanded down. And I do highly recommend, once again, sanding down as much of those layer lines as you possibly can before you start doing any of this other stuff, because if you do, you'll have a much easier time later on. Moving right along, the next thing that you're going to need, and I know that a lot of you have probably seen this stuff already, if you have worked on uh, cars for auto body work or anything like that, or if you've been in the 3D printing community for a while, you've probably heard of this stuff. It is none other than the Bondo glazing and spot putty. This is an every 3D printer's toolkit. I use it all the time to smooth out the prints on my Power Rangers helmets and anything else that I need to have a smooth surface. Now, basically what this is for is to fill in any kind of small imperfections, pinholes, any little dips, or any, any little spots that you find on your finish that aren't perfectly smooth, you can use this stuff to fill it in and then it sands down super easy. You can use one of these sanding sponges or any of your pieces of sandpaper to go ahead and sand that down to a nice smooth finish. We're gonna go through the process together so I'm not going to explain everything to you in this video. This is mostly just to show you the materials that you need so that you can go ahead and purchase those things, know what how much they're gonna cost and all the things that you need so that you have everything before you even start. So with that being said, the next thing, and this is kind of a secret weapon of mine, and you don't have to use this, you definitely can just skip it if you want, but I watched another YouTube video where another cosplayer had discovered this stuff that you can buy at Home Depot. I've not found it anywhere else but Home Depot. It is very cheap, which is a huge thing for me because I'm on a budget and it works almost the same way as like a wood filler would. And this stuff is called Durham's Rock Hard. That's what she said. <laughs> water putty. Now, what makes this stuff awesome for smoothing out your prints is that one, the only thing you need to use with this is water. You just mix water with it. You mix water with it in like a cup until it's like the consistency of like pancake batter. And then you can either use a brush to brush it on, or you can put it on with your fingers, use some gloves, 
or you can just however you want to do it you can put it on with your straight on with your fingers because this stuff is not toxic like this stuff is um, and this stuff if you're using this i highly recommend wearing a mask or a respirator because this produces some pretty toxic fumes that you don't want to be breathing in i'm stupid and i don't wear a mask when i use this stuff and i'm probably going to regret it one day so that's why i'm warning you and letting you know that you should wear a mask so that you don't end up like me one day all right important safety tip thanks Egan. but for this stuff i don't even know that it even has kind of a scent it doesn't seem to have any kind of scent or like fumes coming off of it so i think it's actually perfectly safe to use this without wearing any kind of mask or anything. Um, you can use it indoors. I'd use this in my office, in my bedrooms, and it's, it's, it's great. Uh, it sands just about as easy as the, the Bondo glazing putty does. Um, and it definitely mixes, you know, and you can work with it a lot easier. The only drawbacks to this though, is that it takes a little bit longer to dry than the Bondo's uh, glazing putty does, so you have to wait a, bit, a little bit longer before you can sand it. And if you put it on too thick, it will crack and, and pop off. So make sure you don't put it on too thick. And really, if you're just using it to, to fill in your layer lines, you shouldn't be putting it on that thick anyway. You should put it, be putting it in a very thin layer and then sanding it back down. Going back to the glazing putty, there's actually a couple of different methods you can use also. Uh, to do this with. You can also use gloves and put it on with your fingers. You can put it on with a spreader. A lot of people like to cut up a piece of EVA foam and use that as a spreader to spread it on so they can get an even uh, spread with it. But the newest trick that I've seen people doing is they're taking this Bondo glazing putty and mixing it with acetone, which you can find acetone in fingernail polish remover. Now, I have found it, the cheapest that i found it is at Dollar Tree. They have bottles of fingernail polish remover at Dollar Tree that are 100% acetone, which means they don't have anything in it but acetone. If you're gonna use fingernail polish remover, you wanna make sure that the, the remover is 100% acetone because you don't want all that other extra stuff that sometimes um, companies will put in their polish that you don't want. You want it to be 100% acetone. The stuff that they have at Dollar Tree for $1.25 is 100% acetone. I've already been using it. What you do is you mix it in with this glazing and spot putty and you mix it until it's like the consistency of like a milk. Um, and then you can use, again, use a brush to paint it on and do it and you can paint it on in a really, really thin layer. The acetone causes the Bondo and spot putty to dry really, really quickly, like almost instantly. So once you, once you paint that on, you're able to sand it almost immediately. And it sands really easily. And because you used a brush to paint it on, you're already starting with a very smooth coat to start with. So it's easy, super easy to sand. Because so a lot of people have been doing that. Um, I find that it takes too long personally to do it that way because I don't want to do that many layers of the filler. But for the times I have used it, it worked really, really well. So I do highly recommend it if you want to get a really smooth finish and you don't want to have to do, you know, you don't want to have to sand as much. So once you have your pack sanded, you filled in all the perfections with the Bondo glazing putty or the Durham's rock hard water putty and you have a nice, relatively smooth finish and it is now time to mask and add the texture. So you're gonna need some kind of masking tape, painter's tape. I recommend the blue painter's tape over this like regular masking tape, um, just because that stuff tends to be a little bit more sticky and will pull the primer off. And you don't want that to happen because then you'll have to go back to square one. Once you're ready to add the texture, you're gonna have to mask off all the areas that you don't want the texture to go. And I will put a link in the description to a forum thread from GB fans that shows you what most people think is the proper way to mask off the pack shell for the texture so that the texture is in the right areas. Now there's some variations because not all of the packs were the same. So if you decide to deviate from this, that is totally up to you. But this is the way that I tend to, to do it. I think it looks good. And if you're looking to just kind of for an easy guide to show you exactly what to mask off, 
this is the best option. So I will link that in the description so that you can look at some pictures and see exactly how to mask off your proton pack. So once you have it all masked off and you're ready to add the texture, what are you gonna use? Well, there's a lot of debate about this and I've seen a lot of posts. People ask this question every day. What did you use for your texture? What do you, what do you use to texture the proton pack? I've seen people use wall, popcorn wall texture. I've seen people use truck bed liner spray. I've seen people use hammered paints. And the thing that I have discovered that I like the absolute best, it is the easiest and it is the cheapest. And it looks the closest to the actual texture for all of those things combined for, for the value as, and the ease of use and the look. I don't think this can be beat. And this is going to be the Rust-Oleum Premium Lacquer Paint, Rugged Black. You can see right there. You can get this stuff at Walmart, and I think you could probably get this stuff at uh, some. You could probably get this stuff at auto parts stores as well, but I've gotten it at Walmart only. It's about eleven dollars for a can, which is kind of pricey. But when you look at how much the other methods cost, like the wall texture, the wall texture costs about three times as much as this does. To do and you have to do multiple different steps and you have to do it just right all you got to do with this is shake it up like a spray paint and spray it on and i think it looks really close to what the actual texture looks like on the proton packs and i will show you some pictures of a past proton pack that i used this stuff on to so you can see what it looks like so you can decide whether or not the other thing i like about it unlike a lot of the other methods i've seen people use is that like the truck bed lining stuff has more of a rubber consistency or a rubbery texture. And it's not really like a hard material, it's just more rubbery. And this stuff dries to be a rugged, it's true to its name, it's rugged. It, it dries to a, like a hardened shell, which I think is just more appropriate for a proton pack personally. Uh, so that's my, that's my go-to, that's what I like to use. You can use what you wanna use, but when people ask me, what did you use for your texture? That's what I tell them. Now, I will also say there is a variant version of this stuff that has a picture of a Jeep on the front of it and it's called Rugged Coat and it looks almost identical. It also works really well. It's just a little bit more expensive than this stuff is. So I suggest getting this stuff just because, you know, I'm all about saving money. You got your texture on. We're almost to the end, right? Now, what are you gonna paint it with? Now, there's a lot of debate about this as well because you know the Ghostbusters fandom is wild and everybody has a different opinion on things. In my personal opinion, and you can do whatever you want, it's your proton pack, you can paint it whatever color you want, whatever type of paint you want, all of that good stuff. But this is what I tend to prefer because this is what I think is closest to what the actual packs look like in the movie. And that is going to be black satin paint. Now this is just regular black satin, and this would work just fine, but I like to use the Rust-Oleum Canyon Black specifically in satin. I think that just looks, it just looks really good. It is the closest color to me to what the actual packs look like. And it has the same sheen um, as what the packs had in the movie, because I do not think and there's a lot of people who would think that the, the proton packs in the movie were painted a flat black paint. I don't believe they were flat black. I think they were satin because it, even in the movie, you can see that they have a little bit of a sheen to them. They're not glossy, but they're also not flat because there's a big difference between flat paint and satin paint. Satin paint has a sheen to it. Flat paint has no sheen to it whatsoever. So if you want to go flat, go with flat, more power to you. I think satin just looks better and it is closer to what they actually used on the packs. And that's what I always tend to go with. Now you have your shopping list. You know what to get. You know what materials you need to finish your Proton Pack. You know how much money that it's gonna cost. In our next video, we're gonna be talking about the actual process of finishing the pack. Now that we know all the materials that we need and we're familiar with them, we'll be going step by step to show you exactly how to finish the pack so that we can get it ready for paint.